It's time for another one-off rebuild on the channel and today we are rebuilding a club close to my heart, the team that I support, the team that is in turmoil really at the minute, or at least it seems that way, it is of course Chelsea Football Club. That's right, we'll be rebuilding Chelsea today, so welcome to the rebuild where we're going to spend five years as manager of the club, only focusing in on the transfers and not playing every individual match in the hopes of taking Chelsea's team to real heights. Now, usually in these rebuilds, we're trying to get teams promoted or into European football. Chelsea, the stakes are much higher. We want to be winning European trophies and hopefully even winning a Premier League title whilst we are doing this Chelsea rebuild. The last time they won the title, they had the likes of Victor Mo Moses, Gary Cahill, David Luiz in their side under Antonio Conte. He's since left the club and is now Spurs manager, so plenty of time has passed and it's about time Chelsea are back in talks of winning a title yet again. Now, of course, in real life, things aren't going well, but in football manager terms, they have already done their own mini rebuild in January, so that's going to help us out a little bit. We'll have a look at the squad and the vision in a second, but first, I'd like to ask you guys, if you do enjoy this video, if you want to be a legend, smash the like button for us. That way, YouTube will see people enjoy it and push it out to more people and hopefully help the video do great which will be awesome and please if you haven't already hit that subscribe button we're trying to hit 15,000 subscribers currently so if you can get us towards that goal that'd be great we do these kind of rebuilds fairly regularly so if you enjoy it hit that button and if we're already past 15k subs by the time you're watching this then one thank you but two Still hit that button if you haven't already. I massively, massively appreciate it. Drop a comment down below who you'd like to see rebuilt next, but let's take a look around the club and get started, shall we? Facilities at Chelsea are great. The stadium isn't huge and probably needs some work. In real life, Chelsea are trying to redevelop. Whether we'll get a new stadium during this rebuild, I very much doubt it, but our facilities are in a good place. In terms of a club vision, they want us to follow the method they've been doing in real life of signing young players under the age of 23 for the future and also high reputation players. So so realistically, they want us to bring in some good youngsters to develop the side and hopefully become elite players at the club. You've seen that with the likes of Mudrik, Enzo Fernandez. Obviously, not all of them have hit the ground running, but Chelsea's idea here is to buy players when they're young for resale value in the future and to help the team out to stop them spending lots on players that don't do well. We're looking at you, Romelu Lukaku. And by the way, we're going to have to deal with him in this save, whether we sell him or keep him. But that's a problem for later down the line. This season, they want to make sure we qualify for the Champions League. But fear not, we're not going to get sacked in this rebuild as this is a rebuild where it's going to be five years we don't want to get sacked after season one so I use the editor to become unsackable it's the only thing we use it for so yes we cannot get sacked in this rebuild but we are in charge of the transfers and how the club is set out now the staff situation isn't great here at Chelsea considering the size of club they are they're only an average team in the Premier League in terms of a staff situation at the club but their squad is I mean it's huge guys it's probably one of the biggest in the league there's plenty of players here some who are young and very talented if we look by ability you've got the likes of James Havertz Mount older heads like Thiago Silva Raheem Sterling will hopefully help us out and he's not even that old I don't really know why I'm calling him old he's only 27 uh, players with lots of potential like Hudson Odoi still Fafana Enzo Fernandez Mudrik and this is only half of it there's players on loan that we've got to deal with and in the dev center there's also all of this talent, Badashil, Madueke, Broya, Lewis Hall, Santos, Chukwemeka, Fafana. Unlike most rebuilds, our job here isn't going to be as much about bringing people in, but more about getting people out and balancing the squad because the dynamics aren't looking great here. Not much team cohesion. The club atmosphere is struggling and it's a time of transition for Chelsea and we need to make sure we survive. In terms of a tactic, I'm not too sure what I'll do yet, but what I will do is make no transfers in season one. We're just going to forward ahead and see what kind of hand we get dealt. Can we get Champions League football? Will we do what we're doing in real life where we're just mid-table, mediocrity? We'll see what happens, but let's see how things go in season one. And it is really not the most ideal season. We've ended up finishing 10th in the league behind the likes of your standard big six, but also Brighton are in there as they are in real life. Brentford doing very well, finishing third in the table. We've also got Newcastle and Villa just ahead of us. We lost more games than we won. And this is very reminiscent of Chelsea's form in real life. So actually, maybe this is a good place to start. We had no clear goal scorer. Havertz scored the most for us with about 18 goals in the league, which isn't a terrible number, mind you. But Chelsea need a player that can score more than that. The Cups were terrible. Fourth round exit in the FA Cup to Norwich. Carabao Cup exit to 
Tottenham, which would have hurt, and a quarterfinal Champions League exit to Barca isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely not great. And we are going to be struggling because of that. In terms of a tactic, I wanted to get the most out of the good central defenders we had at the club and our wide players and our lack, really, of central midfield talent. Only Kante and Fernandez, and also Kovacic, of course, are actually on what I would consider an elite Premier League potential winning level. Uh, so we went for a five at the back tactic that really did not work for us. Maybe we'll change that in season two. Um, in terms of our actual good performers at the club, we had Lukaku, who's out on loan, of course. Kepa, who played one game. Pulisic, who played four times with six off the bench. That is awful. Where's he been all season? Has he been injured? I'm sure he has, knowing Pulisic. We've also had Kai Havertz doing fairly well for us and where's Fafana. Other than that, everyone else was either mediocre or rubbish. So there's a lot of work to do this year. Some players that are going to be leaving us. So let's get cracking with the transfers and hopefully start sorting this team out a little bit. I'm just going to interrupt past Jake for a few seconds to let you know that this video is sponsored by the good people over at Pookie. If you haven't heard of Pookie, it's a free football prediction platform where you can guess for scores across the top five leagues in Europe as well as a few other competitions. From your predictions you earn points whether you get the score exactly right or maybe you guess the correct amount of goals in the game or whether it's over 2.5 goals or not and this score can carry you on to the leaderboard. Depending on how high you finish on this leaderboard you can get some awesome rewards and remember you can do this for completely free. On Pookie you'll also have a Pookie ball that will give you benefits on certain matches. For example my Pookie ball gives me benefits on Nottingham Forest predictions so if I get those right, I get bonus points and you can upgrade your Pokeball over time by earning XP just through making predictions. You can go out and buy Pokeballs if you want, but you can play for completely free and have a lot of fun on the platform. I'll leave a link in the description that will let you sign up and let me know what predictions you make. We'll be doing a few pieces of content, a few shorts here and there to collaborate with Puki. But thank you for listening. Go check it out in the description. Thanks to Puki for sponsoring. And let's go back to Pass Jake and carry on that Chelsea rebuild. Our first sale, it's not much, but we've let Baba Raman go for £1 million to Brest. He was on an incredible contract at Chelsea, so we're pretty happy to move him on. Christian Pulisic's time at Chelsea is up. We've decided to let him go. He's going to AC Milan for £32 million. Played well for us, but didn't play regularly enough. Has been a bit hit and miss at Chelsea. And in real life, with the likes of Mudrik coming in, Datro Fafana also joining the club, Madueke, there just doesn't seem to be enough room for Pulisic anymore, so we're letting him move club. We also got some money in for Hakim Ziyech, the 30-year-old Moroccan, didn't play too much for us last year, and when he did play, was pretty shocking, so he's gone to Inter Milan for £40 million. The other side of Milan, Pulisic has gone to AC, Ziyech to Inter, we make about £50 million from them both combined, and we just wipe the slate clean with them and move on. We got a pretty good fee for Malang Saar, there was actually quite a lot of interest in him after his season at Monaco, where he only played twice, I cannot understand this, and he's gone to Atletico Madrid for 12 and a half mil. If they want to pay that feel free so Malang Sarr has left the club a very good deal in my eyes I know he's young and he's French and he's a pretty decent talent but I feel like we kind of ripped Atletico off there so very happy with that deal as much as he's had a resurgence in real life in football manager terms Mendy was the better goalkeeper between him and Kepa we've also got Slanina coming through who's out on loan so I thought we've got to sell one Kepa had the most resale value was happy to leave as well so he offered him out and PSG of all people came in for him as their backup goalkeeper I suppose they've let Kalo Navas go, but I'm not too sure. Either way, they've paid £11 million for him. We let him move club. He can move on from Chelsea in his career and hopefully do well at PSG. Our next sale was Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who's actually gone to, I believe, the Qatar divisions here, to al Asad Sports Club. They paid a pretty nice fee of £7.5 for him. He was on a pretty big contract, injured most of the time, and as you can see, only played once last year. So we cut ties with Loftus-Cheek, let him go. Hopefully, he can enjoy his life in Qatar. The sales don't stop. Bakayoko has also left to join Strasbourg. Played five times for Milan on loan last year. Was terrible for Chelsea since we signed him and now he's gone for 7 million. At least we made some money from him. Another notable one was Ethan Ampadu leaving the club to Crystal Palace. He's gone for 4.6 million pounds. Had a lot of talent did Ampadu. Probably still has a lot of potential but just wasn't good enough anymore at Chelsea. We've got better options so he cashed in whilst we could. But my favourite transfer story
story of all is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. I tried to offer him out for literally zero in the hopes of getting an offer where someone would just take him and we get the wages off the books because he was still here for another year on his deal. No one actually wanted to pay zero pounds for him. So instead, I just like for some reason put one pound in and offered him out for one pound thinking no one would do that either. Because of the way FM works, it kind of activated some interest. We had a bidding war at one pound for Aubameyang and he's gone to Zenit. We just wanted to get rid of him. So we paid 10 million pounds for him. We sold him for a quid. It's absolutely brilliant to see that. I genuinely just went transfer, offered a club one pound and they went for him. So he's gone. We've dealt with Aubameyang. He's moved and now we can move on. Our only incoming is one that Chelsea look like they'll be making in real life. It's not official yet, so it's not represented in Football Manager, but I did think he suited what we needed in the team anyway. So we have activated Christopher Nkunku's release clause from RB Leipzig, 56 million pounds for him. Considering that's like Ziyech and Pulisic money put together, I think it works quite nicely. He's going to take over in that João Felix role. He's gone back to Atletico after his loan here at Chelsea so we've bought in Nkunku and we're hoping that he can be a big player for our side. I actually think it's a pretty good valuation for him. 56 million from Leipzig. We'll hope he can kick on and it now leaves our squad looking like this. We have loaned some players out but I feel like we're in a better place in terms of getting rid of of some of the dead wood. You can see I don't have to scroll too far now to see the full side, which is good because it was really bloated last time out. But in terms of potential, we have a new player to talk about, Levi Colville, who was on loan at Brighton last year, played decently well and played fairly regularly. Obviously, they finished above us in the league. He now comes in a lot of potential in real life and FM. He's seen as another one like Reese James and Mount who come from the academy that can actually come in and influence this Chelsea first team squad. So we'll be hoping to see that from Levi Colville. We'll keep him around around and keep him developing and I imagine this season when Thiago Silva goes he can be a good replacement. Silva is here for another year. In terms of contracts that are expiring soon we have got Silvers and Aspilicuetas. I don't think we'll keep them around. We need to make a decision on Kante. Lukaku I tried to offer out but no one wanted so I guess we're just going to have to use him and see if he does all right. We are crying out for a striker. Maybe if we can draw the line under the bridge with Lukaku and just give him a fresh start he can do something for us. It didn't work under Tuchel. He made the whole fuss in the media wanted to leave but maybe this time it will work our best 11 now looks like this you might see we've changed formation to a 4-2-3-1 tactic it would apparently be Mendy in goal Reese James Wesley Fofana Thiago Silva and Cucurella with a Fernandez, Kovacic Hudson-Odoi Mount Sterling and Havertz team is that really our best 11 where's Kante at there we go. Okay, maybe it wasn't our best 11. Now it is. Mudrik comes in, Kante comes in, Chilwell comes in, Silva comes in, and yeah, you can kind of see it on your screen right now. Interestingly enough, though, Lukaku not considered as good as Havertz as a striker. We'll certainly see about that. Hopefully now with this kind of formation, we can get the most out of Mount. Also Havertz coming in in that number 10 spot as the shadow striker, hopefully getting a lot of goals from that position. Very excited to see how the team can do. Let's see how we get on in season two. Hopefully this time we can qualify for some European football. And it's a much better season from us this year round, even though in the Cups we got embarrassed by Manchester City and Blackburn on the first occasion in both Cups. In the league, we've done very well, finishing third, only a few points away from Liverpool, who won the title, five points more than us. But the top six is pretty much the top six you'd expect, other than Tottenham, who are in seventh, Leicester, come into that sixth place spot but we guarantee ourselves Champions League football now we've done pretty well winning a lot more games Havertz doing very well and overall it's starting to take shape a little bit more here now at Chelsea in terms of performances our big ones were Mason Mount who scored 22 goals he didn't have a great year last year but this year when we moved him into that shadow striker position you can see he tore it up and was easily one of the best players in the whole league last season he's made it known that Mason Mount is now back he's back in the team very hard working player perfect in football manager and he's done the job for us there Kai Havertz scores 32 in 38 appearances across all competitions Sterling also doing well as is James Hudson-Odoi which is nice to see him making a breakthrough for Fana Kante we've done very well there and Kunku maybe not the best season from him but we'll give him time to develop the same with Mudrik and Malé Gusto who's now here after his loan out at Lyon I believe it was yes it was he didn't play too much as a deputy to Reese James but with Aspilicueta moving on and Thiago Silva now moving on, hopefully we can start to bring these younger players in and the side's starting to sort itself out. But there are some players that I think we'll try and move on this summer. So let's get on with our transfer business in season three. Hopefully we can really start bringing this team together into a title challenging unit. We started off season three by letting go of some key players at the club, some of the older players that just maybe weren't cutting it as much anymore. And we 
had better players lined up. The first one though was Edouard Mendy where he decided he wanted to leave when this offer came in. He's gone to join Manchester United as their first choice goalkeeper for £21.5 million. Pounds. He signed for a rival so realistically we don't want him to succeed but I think we have replaced him very well. So Mendy moves on but it gets sadder than that and that's because fan favourite N'Golo Kante has decided to move on. He has moved to PSG. They came in with an offer. He told me that he'd like to leave if the offer came in so he let him go. £18 million pounds for him. He had a year left on his deal I believe so we thought you know what we'll cut ties we'll let Kante go. He's done enough for us and hopefully he enjoys winding down his years in the beautiful streets of Paris but Kante is gone. Club legend Aspilicueta leaves as well after plenty of years of service. 34 years of age he's moved to Girona back to sunny Spain for £1.8 million. Pounds. Chelsea fans know him as Dave but now he is a player from the past. He's moved on and we're going to carry on with our lives and we also sold some other fairly key players. Hopefully Male Gusto can step up and fill in that deputy right back role as good as Aspie was doing it for us. And it was Mateo Kovacic who was a surprise transfer this summer. I didn't really plan to let him go but Juventus decided they wanted him and he wasn't really starting for us as much anymore. It was all from the bench and he actually asked to leave so he went for £29 million. Juventus' transfer valuation looks much higher now that he's there but I think that's a bit inflated because he's recently joined. He's got a long term deal. I still think it's the right decision particularly when when you see who he brought in in that position but Kovacic leaves as well as Kante it's a new era for Chelsea's midfield a very surprising transfer was Mark Cucurella who's been playing fairly regularly kind of sharing game time with Ben Chilwell as many expected him to do in real life he's now internationally capped for Spain 26 years of age but it just you know wasn't working for whatever reason he wasn't playing very well at all maybe it's a tactic I don't know as you can see he played twice in terms of starts and 26 sub appearances and then Tottenham decided they wanted to come in for him they paid a pretty hefty fee of 45 million and I wasn't going to turn it down. We make a lot of our money back on Cucurella. We can get a younger replacement, preferably one who can grow as Chilwell gets older so they're not both competing for that position at the exact same time and getting unhappy. So Cucurella goes. Bit of a weird one for him to go to rival Spurs but we're letting him go there anyway. And the final one kind of hurts a little bit but also makes sense. Armando Broya, a very good young striker but we now have the likes of Lukaku at the club, Havertz and also David Datro for Fana coming through. Through. So we let Broya go. The Albanian deserves to play regular football. He was on loan at Olympiacos, didn't impress enough for us to want to keep him. So now he's gone to Fulham. £36 million we have got from him. I think that's a good deal. I'm sure Fulham will enjoy him and get their money's worth as well. But Broya has now left. Edward Mendy's replacement comes in the form of young Ukrainian Anatoly Trubin, who joins his national teammate Mikhailo Mudrik. He is a brilliant goalkeeper who's got a lot of potential to get better, brilliant aerial reach, and we're hoping that he can settle into the Premier League. He's been great for Shakhtar. Our scouts loved him. When I started looking for a goalkeeper, they were the one that he suggested. We originally tried Porto's goalkeeper, Diogo Costa, but he wanted too much. So we went for Trubin and hopefully he can be a great player for us under the age of 23 as the board wants and he'll get better as we get better. For the Cucurello money, we have bought Ryan A. Nori, who comes in as a squad player, 23 years of age. He's been playing at Wolves and playing regularly and developing well. Maybe not playing great, but we we were kind of out of options in terms of who we wanted to sign to replace Cucurella. But I thought 8 Nori did kind of fit in with what we were looking for from a Chelsea sign-in. Young, room to get better, but also plenty of ability. He's very good going forward, but can defend well too. Hopefully he fulfills his potential at the club. Him on one side, Gusto on the other. They'll both be deputising for the two English fullbacks, Chilwell and James. And hopefully that will be our fullback position sorted for years now. But with Kante and Kovacic leaving, we decided we needed a real, real bit of talent to back up our man Enzo Fernandez in the middle. So who else is there to go for other than Jude Bellingham? Well, Declan Rice maybe. We tried to sign him, but he was at Real Madrid now, so we couldn't anymore. But Jude Bellingham was still playing for Dortmund. He had a release clause. We activated it, £93 million. He's been playing well for Dortmund. Hopefully he can play even better for us. He comes in as one of our best players, if not the best, apparently as good as Havertz and Mount. So there you go. Bellingham is at the club, 21 years, a player known worldwide, world-class player who Who's under the age of 23. This is exactly what the board wanted and our club is now looking very very strong. If we were to look at our best 11 now, pick best 11, there we go. It is going to be Trubin in goal with Reese James for Fana and it's nice to see Colville has also made his way into that best team first 11 now that Thiago
Thiago Silva has moved on. Chilwell, Bellingham, Fernandez, Sterling, Mount, Mudrick and Havertz. What a team this is. We've got great players on the bench as well. Fafana is now going to be part of the first team, hopefully. And with this squad, I really do think we can push on for that title. So let's see how we can do in season three. And we have won our first bit of silverware. Before we talk about that, though, don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and you are enjoying up to this point. We do loads of these kind of videos. So if you enjoy this, chances are you'll enjoy the other stuff on the channel too. But the FA Cup has came to Chelsea. We finally won a trophy in our three years here. It's probably took us a little bit longer than we would have wanted, but our cup runs have been awful. But now we've had a good one winning the FA Cup. Carabao Cup, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals. In terms of our Champions League run, how far did we get? We got past the round of 16, beating Atletico Madrid. We got knocked out by Capitoline in penalties, who are actually Roma. Okay, that makes sense. I think my name fix must have wore off with the winter update. But there you go. That's where we finish. And then the Premier League, we finished one point away from winning the title. We actually won more and drew way less than Manchester City. We just lost a lot of games, to be honest, for a team that's finished second. One point away, one point ahead of Liverpool. We're really in that title conversation, but we need to do better. But what's interesting this year is Romelu Lukaku has decided to step up for us. Last year, he scored 8 in 23. This year, 34 in 33. He's clearly decided, you know what? This is where I am. I'm at Chelsea. I'm just going to have to make it work. And by God, has he done that with loads of goals for us. That really helps us this year. The FA Cup, who did we beat? Let's have a look. We beat Liverpool 4-1 in the final with Mikhailo Mudrik scoring twice, Havertz with one and Lukaku with another. Harvey Elliott with the goal for Liverpool. But overall, it's been a very good season, actually. It looks like we just kind of lost towards the start of the season. Maybe it took some time for our players to really get used to the new signings and whatnot. But when we started making it work, it really worked well for us. So I'm definitely happy with that in terms of how the seasons went. Lukaku, Havertz, Mount, Sterling, Fafana, some of our best performers. Mudrik developing very nicely now. Looks like a top draw player at the age of 24. Levi Colville has been getting better. Badia Shield has been playing more. Lots of players making an impact. Very happy with the way this is going, but it's time now for us to win a title. We should have won it this year, but we're going to try again for season four. Let's see if we can bring that Premier League title to Chelsea. If not, this rebuild might be considered a little bit of a failure with the amount of money that we've spent. Our first sale was Conor Gallagher going to rivals Arsenal. He just wasn't playing much for us across any of the seasons, really. And when he did play, he wasn't playing great. We've got enough good young talent now that we don't need to worry about homegrown issues. And it was just time to let Conor go somewhere else. So he's gone to Arsenal for 26 million. He's a squad player there. Valuation way higher than what we sold him for. But I think that's just because he's recently signed. He's English. We'll let it pass. We don't care. We've made some money from him. Gallagher goes. Good luck to him at Arsenal but he wasn't the only one that left. Callum Hudson-Odoi has gone to the Bundesliga and to play for Borussia Dortmund. He was obviously on loan at Leverkusen in season one, came back to us and played a lot. But with the signings that we made recently, he wasn't playing too much. And then this season, we signed a top draw player to play on that right-hand side, which is going to mean that Hudson-Odoi doesn't play as much. So I thought, you know what? Let's cash him while we could. We had a few teams coming in for him, actually. He's very much wanted in the FM world. And it was Dortmund that ended up paying 40 million. We bit their hands off, let him go. He'll be good over there, I'm sure, but I think we're very happy to take in that fee. The other sale was Kaladu Koulibaly. At centre-back, we now had Fafana, Shalaba, Colville and Badia Shiel. Four good players playing that centre-back role and 34-year-old Koulibaly was no longer needed. So we've let him go to Napoli or Parthenope, as they're called, without the name fix. He was playing here and there for us, but not too much anymore. He's gone back to the club where he did so well at, but in terms of incomings, we didn't have to do too much this year. Just promote some youth and also sign one one very key player. And that was Villarreal's Jeremy Pino, who comes in as an extremely good player, playing on that right-hand side as our inverted winger this year, I would have thought. He can also play on the left if needed, if we want him to do that. But the 22-year-old Spaniard has got 16 goals and 27 international caps, which is crazy. Amazing attributes, room to get better. And he's been performing way, way above expectation at Villarreal. I know he's good, but to get these kind of average match ratings show just how good he is. We've paid £90 million for him, a pretty huge huge fee but I'm definitely happy to have him and it now means that our squad is set up to look like this. Picking without restriction, picking our best 11. It's a very young team of Trubin, James, Fafana, Colville, Chilwell, Bellingham, Fernandez, Pino, Mount, Mudrick and Havertz with some very, very good talent on the bench to help us out. The likes of Cassidy that Chelsea signed in real life this year now making their mark in the first team with the likes of Gallagher, 
moving on. So it's good to have these kind of guys promoted. We're also seeing the likes of Male Gusto, Datro Fafana being in and around the team and helping out when possible, which is good. It goes to show the plan for Chelsea has worked of buying these young players to help the first team years down the line. But we've got a very strong start in 11. Hopefully this time we can get over the line and finally win a Premier League title. I think at this point it might have even been 10 years since we last won it. Let's have a look. It's obviously been Liverpool and City since we last won it in 2016. So nearly a decade with just those two clubs winning. We've been close on a few occasions, but now hopefully we can get that title. And we've done it. Not only that, we've technically won a treble if you want to count the Community Shield as an actual trophy. But the interesting thing about this league title is yes, we've done well, but I think realistically this year we've won it because everyone else has been rubbish, including Manchester City, who fell all the way down to 19 points below us, only getting 71 points this year. Romelu Lukaku was a big part of getting us towards that title, as were our wide players in Mudrik and Pino. We have finally won the Premier League. Alongside winning the FA Cup and the Community Shield, we got knocked out in the Champions League by Arsenal, who then went on to win the trophy. Okay. Chelsea fans won't like that bit at all, especially the fact that Arsenal have actually won the Champions League. We haven't actually came close to winning that yet, so I think we might have to rule that out in terms of something that we can achieve. But next season, if we can win another league title, I'll class it as five years of success. That's two FA Cups, one league title. I think we need to add a couple more trophies and we'll be looking good. It was a penalty win against Manchester United in the FA Cup that got us that trophy with Marcus Rashford missing the penalty for Man U. And the Champions League it was an embarrassing night at the Emirates, the first leg where we lost 4-0 with Jesus and Saka scoring. We tried to recuperate in the second leg, winning 3-1 in our home tie, but it didn't mean enough. We ended up losing that leg by a couple of goals, but uh, overall a much better season. Community Shield, we beat Manchester City in penalties. We didn't miss a single penalty, so clearly we must be pretty decent from the spot. They've even got Kavicha, Kavara, Shakilia, and they're finishing so low in the league. That's great to see for us, I suppose. This year, it was once again the Romelu Lukaku show, who has been doing great for us, but is now kind of getting on in age and maybe we'll look to cash in on him with his contract getting close towards its end date now. I don't know if I want to sign him for another long-term deal, but Pino has done great in his first year. Mason Mount has continued to excel in a Chelsea shirt, doing so, so well for us yet again. Kai Havertz is also up there as he has been in this whole simulation, probably our most consistent player. We've also got the likes of Sterling doing well still. Mudrik and Kunku's now starting to do well also, even if most of his appearances are off the bench. He is getting goals here and there and helping the side out. David Datro Fafana scoring 30 goals. Rhys James, Colville, all of these players playing a hell of a lot and doing very well. I'm very happy with this. Now we just need to make a few more tweaks in season five and hopefully we can win that title again and maybe have one final crack at trying to win the UCL. The first bit of transfer business we did was selling Lewis Hall, the youngster who's been playing on loan for a few years at Brighton. The development team have been handling the loans in this save and they decided to loan into Brighton with an optional fee of 21 and a half million, which they paid. And I think, you know what, for the kind of player he is and potentially has, We'll take that money. I think we've done pretty well there. We've had this young player as well, Jimmy J. Morgan, who's been playing in our development teams for a while. Chelsea signed him from Southampton in real life very recently, and he's moved to West Ham for 12 and a half mil. A decent striker, but you know what? We'll definitely take that cash. We'll reinvest it into our team. I mentioned we might cash in on Romelu Lukaku, and we did exactly that, letting him go to PSG for 24 million. He was great for us, but his contract was getting towards its last year. We weren't going to re-sign. He still wanted a huge hefty wage, and there were better options out there, I felt that we could sign with the money that we had. He's only an impact sub at PSG, which goes to show the kind of level that he probably is at now. Um, but yeah, Lukaku, thank you for actually doing a job for us in the end. But now he has moved on. And we called it a day with Christopher Nkunku, who's been doing pretty well for us, but maybe not the level that we wanted him to get to. Either way, though, Atletico Madrid, who have been very much involved in this whole rebuild, decided to come in and pay pretty much the fee that we signed him for a few years ago. So we took the cash, we've let him go, and we're going to rebuild with him gone. His replacement was 65 million pound man Desiree Douai who we've signed from Ren, where he's been doing very well a player with a lot of potential but also a lot of ability he can play more in that central area which is what we need he can back up the likes of Enzo and Bellingham in that midfield I think he's a good sign in yes we paid quite a lot but he's a very much established young player that can go on to be even better hopefully gets called up for the France national team I think it's a good investment and one that will help us down the line more quality to add to the squad better depth and hopefully add to the levels that we've 
got. We decided to bring in Alex Scott, who was playing for Fulham in this save. They've signed him from Bristol for 15 million. We've paid about 40 million for him. A player that's got tons of potential still at the age of 22, good attributes and can really help in a bunch of positions, versatile, and someone that will hopefully just play a squad role in the team. An English player, an investment player, will either sell him on for the same money in a few years, or he'll come good and be part of our first team. And our Romelu Lukaku replacement is the currently injured Dusan Vlahovic, but that injury will wear off soon, and I think he is going to be a very good player for us. 26 years of age, 46 goals in 50 appearances for Serbia is nuts. We paid £78 million for him. He's been scoring goals for fun for Juve. They've made a slight profit on him, but I'm very happy with him. I think he sets us up for a few years up top. A brilliant player, a physical presence, and hopefully he'll adapt to the Premier League really easily and score us a ton of goals. So with that being done, that is our rebuild technically complete. In terms of the club info, we now have pretty much the same facilities. The stadium, I think, is at the same level. The staff situation is looking much better than it did before. And in terms of a squad that we've got, we've really managed to build a balance here, I think, in terms of the team we have. It's not as much overloaded with lots of players. Now, instead, we've just got a lot of good quality. A lot of guys that are young and can still play at this level for another five or six years. Trubin, James, Fafana, Colville, Chilwell, Bellingham, Fernandez, Pino Mount, Stellan and Havertz is apparently our best 11, but I imagine Vlahovic is going to have something to say about Havertz in that striker position, but we'll see. We've got a very strong squad. Let's see how we go on in season five. Can we win the title again or will we fall short? Can we go for a trophy? Maybe even a European one. Let's see what we can do in season five. And you know what? We didn't win a league title, but I'll certainly take this because alongside winning the FA Cup for a third year in a row, I believe we've won it, right? Yes, we have. We won 7-0 against Aston Villa in the finale but also the community shield that we won but despite losing out on the league by eight points to Liverpool we went further in the Champions League this year going all the way to win it against PSG in the final let's take a little bit more of a look at that 7-0 in the FA Cup Bellingham Sterling with a hat-trick who's still playing for us and doing well Mount Fafana and Havertz scoring there and then PSG it was Pino and Raheem Sterling yet again who got us the goals to get us over the line this time we managed to beat Arsenal on the way through as well as Liverpool and Leipzig it's been a great season for us even if we did miss out on that Premier League title. Jeremy Pino, Mason Mount and Havertz are some of the best players in the league apparently. Our goal difference was way higher. We drew the same amount of games. We just seem to draw a few too many which is a bit unfortunate but it will happen when we're tired and playing in so many competitions. I don't even know if we got past the third round ever in the Carabao Cup. It seemed like we never really made a good attempt to win it but either way the FA Cup is ours, the Community Shield is ours again and the Champions League is back in the hands of Chelsea. It's been a few years, about five years, six years since we last won it. So it's great that we have won that. But overall, I think this rebuild has gone very, very successfully. We've built a team that can actually work well with each other. We've brought in some extra players to help with that cohesive unit. Kai Havertz has became an absolute beast up front for Chelsea, finally living up to that potential at the age of 27. We've got good academy talent doing well, the likes of Mount, James and also Colville as well as some players coming in from abroad and helping the team but there we go that is the end of our Chelsea rebuild if you have enjoyed it smash the like button for me and let me know who you want me to rebuild next subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you next time everyone thank you and goodbye